hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making a scarf hanger. Well, this is a great little project that gives you the opportunity to use up some scrap plywood. Um, you can use half inch or three quarter. For me, I'm going to use half inch and basically it's a way to hang your scarfs in a closet instead of hang, having them lying around. So what we're going to do first is we're going to grab a scrap of half inch plywood and we're going to head over to the bench for some layout. Well, normally on our builds when I'm doing layout, I love to use my Ankara T rules, but today we're going to be going back to basics with a tape measure and a square. Um, we'll throw some rulers into the mix, but it's just basically to demonstrate you don't need fancy things to make a fun project. So the first thing that I want to do on my scrap, uh, scrap plywood, this is just construction grade. It's not even fancy plywood, but it's half inch thick. I'm just going to mark a center line here, just roughly, just to give us a basis to work from and we'll place our center line right here. Now this section of the plywood right here is going to be the bottom of our hanger. So we want it to be a total of 17 inches wide. So I'm just going to place a mark from the center line out at eight and a half inches on either side. And then using our square We'll just square that off, just so that we have a reference point. Well now, just to get super technical, I'm just going to use an old tea container, and I'm going to line up the tea container with the edge of our mark that we just placed here and the bottom of our hanger, and we're just going to trace around it to give us our corner here and we'll do that on both sides there you go how technical is that well the next thing that I want to do is mark the height of our hanger so along our center line here I'm just going to measure up seven inches from the bottom just like that and I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to join from that point to wherever it intersects with our circles that we just drew from tracing of the T container. That pencil really wants to follow the rough cut plywood line, doesn't it? That's okay. I'll show it who's boss. <laughs> Hey, okay, maybe it's gonna show me who's boss. There we go, okay. Looking more and more like a hanger. Well now from the top of our point here, we're going to measure up two and a half inches along our center line. Looks like I need to extend my center line here. So let's do that. We'll just line up a ruler here, extend our center line, and right there, two and a half inches up from the point, we're going to draw ourselves a two inch diameter circle. You know what, looking at that, I'm going to change it. I don't like the way that looks. I'm actually gonna bring that down a bit. I'm gonna bring it down one more inch. So at an inch and a half from our point, I'm going to draw our one and a half inch, or our, sorry, our two inch diameter circle. I think we're a little too high there on that other one. There you go, that looks a little better. Now, once we get our two inch circle drawn, we are now going to take a measurement 
and we're going to draw a two and a half inch circle. Just like this. Sorry. We're going to draw a three inch circle, not two and a half. Just like that. Now that essentially is going to be the hook for our hanger. So we're gonna pretty this up just a little bit and for that I'm going to use a circle template. You know what? I said I was gonna get back to basics and I think I am. I'm not gonna use a circle template because I'm gonna show you that you don't need fancy stuff like circle templates to do this. So we're just going to draw it by hand. Somewhere here like this, this will be at around, say, the 10 o'clock mark, and then your hanger hoop comes here, and then we're gonna bring it down just like this. And then on this side, the hanger hoop is gonna come around, and we'll loop it in just like that. And of course, you can play with this however you like, make it a little wider so it's a little more symmetrical. Just draw it out however you like. Okay, so I think we have it there now. I think that is our hook and our hanger shape. The only thing you really have to be concerned with here is the space because this will be cut out, which means you're going to lose this section of your circle. So you just want to make sure that your space between here and wherever it is that you curve this off here is big enough to fit over your standard uh, clothes hanger pole. So you may want to take a measurement of the pole that you intend to hang it on. And in average, if you have at least an inch and a half there, you should be just fine. I have one and five eighths, so everything should be good. So the next thing that we need to do at this point is to take the measurements to place our circles that will hold our scarves. Now, all of these really are our standard holes. There's, there's nothing special about them. It's all about placement. That's what it boils down to. So I'm just going to look here at what we've got. And I think I'm gonna come up an inch and a half from the bottom on each one here, just like this. And I will draw a line joining that across here. Now this will um, be representative of the center of the holes that are going to hold our scarves. There you go. Just like that. So now that we have that line drawn, I think what we're going to use are two inch holes to hold our scarves. So this cross section here between our center line and our line that we placed here at an inch and a half up from the bottom, this will be one hole. We will also measure in from the edge, I'm gonna say at two inches from each edge, and this will be another hole for our scarves. Two inches in, just like that. And now in the center between this line and the line that we just put here for our scarf, we need to put one right in the middle. So that's gonna be at three and a quarter inches out from the middle. Just like that. So those one, two, three, four, five holes will now hold our scarves. So let's get those holes drilled using a two inch Forstner bit and then we can mark the other holes in our hanger. Well, with those five holes drilled, we have room for two more. One will go right here and one will go right here. So what we're gonna do is measure between 
our center hole and our next one out on both sides and place a mark right in the center there. So there's a center mark and then another one right here. Just like that. And we're going to take our square and extend it up. And now from the bottom, we will measure up to have it centered in this area right here. We will place a mark here at four and a quarter inches. And that will be the center mark for our last two holes in our hanger. So just like we did with these ones, I'm going to take over to the drill press and drill these last two two inch holes. And with that done, our next step is we're just going to take it over to the scroll saw and we're going to cut out the perimeter here of our hanger. With the scarf hanger all cut out now, I'm just going to give the entire piece front and back a good sanding and then we're going to need our trim router. Well what I've done is I've installed a 1 8 round over bit in my trim router and I'm just going to round off both sides of the interior of each one of our 2 inch holes. And with that done, we're just going to go around the perimeter all the way around our hanger and give it a good sanding just to soften up these sharp edges. Well, I don't really want to leave this as plain old plywood. So I have a bunch of the paint left over from our uh, perpetual wall calendar build. So all I'm going to do is give this a couple coats of paint to give it some color and make it look a little better. And that will be pretty much it for this particular build. And there you have it. A scarf hanger. Guys, you may look at this project and think, what the heck is that? But think about this now. This project provides a wonderful opportunity. And it's not using up scrap plywood. It's not using up leftover paint. Although those are bonuses of the projects. You have the opportunity here to get a young one involved in this project. There is absolutely nothing that a young one cannot do with this project. There is no reason that they can't use the scroll saw. There is no reason that with adult supervision they cannot use the drill press. There is absolutely no reason that they can't trace out the circles, that they can't draw the lines with some help with measuring from mommy or daddy. There is absolutely no reason that a child cannot do this project. The only thing I would say that needs to be done by an adult would be the roundovers with the router or the trim router. So what does that provide? That provides getting them involved with a skill set, getting them involved in your shop, making memories of you and your child building something together and what a great opportunity to give to, say, mom for Mother's Day. Um, a nice hanger that they made and decorated themselves to hang her scarfs off of. How about this? Forget the scarfs. Forget Mother's Day. How about Father's Day? How about getting some 
child mother time to get into the shop and to, you know, make this project for dad for Father's Day for a tie rack. This is a spectacular opportunity to take your child away from the electronics and get them into an environment where they're working with their hands, they're making something that they can be proud of, and you are creating memories that will last a lifetime. So please don't discount this project as, oh my goodness, what kind of simple crap is Kenny putting, putting out this week? No, that is not what this is about. This is not only functional, but it provides you with such a great opportunity to spend quality time with your children away from the electronics and the television and all that other stuff that kids of our generation here are so wrapped up into and so involved with. Guys, this project was a load of fun, dead simple, and honestly, it can be modified. If you don't have that two inch Forstner bit, don't worry about it. Cut those holes with a scroll saw. Don't have a scroll saw? Don't worry about it. Cut the whole darn thing using a coping saw or a jigsaw. It is modifiable. Rock what you got, guys, because this project allows for it. You don't have any of that stuff? You know what, how about a router with an upcut spiral bit and just carefully cutting around? There are plenty of ways to make this project. Using a jigsaw, cutting outside the lines, rough cut, and then using a drum sander or a Dremel tool to finish it off up to the line. Use your imagination, rock what you got, and give this one a try. If you haven't already, guys, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the program. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this week's content. Guys, it's been a lot of fun. Great way to use up scrap paint and material. A great way to provide a gift for mom or dad. And you know what, guys? I hope that you enjoyed it. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.